Hello, everyone. I'm Brian Carrington, and you're listening to Call Talk for November 18th, 2015. And today's topic is big data. That's right. Now, if you're listening live, we'd like to invite you to be a part of the show and ask some questions. And it's pretty easy. Here's how you can do it. You can either email me or you can call in on your phone. The email is probably the best way, most common, and it's brian at benchmarkportal.com. It's spelled out B-R-I-A-N at benchmarkportal.com. Now, if you're listening and you'd like to call in, you can do that with this number. It's 347 347- 857-3117. Really quick again, that's 347-857-3117. Just make sure you press number one on your phone to let me know that you have a question and I'll get you in. Of course, I'd like to remind everyone that all of our shows are archived and available to listen at your convenience on our website at benchmarkportal.com. So go to there any time of the day that's good for you and check out. We have over five seasons of shows and a lot of great topics. Of course, we have a good topic today, big data. Let's jump into the show. It's my pleasure to introduce the host of Call Talk, Bruce Belfiore. Well, thank you very much, Brian, and welcome back to Call Talk, everyone. Big data, big buzz, is it really a big deal? And for we know that there's also a big question mark for many people in our industry with regard to what big data is and what it really means to them. And uh, so what we'd like in this episode is to make it as useful for as many people as possible because we know that people are at various stages of understanding and knowledge with regard to big data. And unless you are already a master of the universe when it comes to big data, I think that you'll find something useful, uh, a really some really good takeaways from uh, this show. And that's why we wanted to talk about it with an expert. Uh, we've brought on Jeff Colgan. And I'd like to welcome Jeff to the to the show. Good day, mate. Yeah, hello, Bruce. How are you? Uh, <laughs> pleasure to be here. Uh, thanks for hosting me and having me. Um, I think this is a wonderful knowledge forum uh, that you're providing the industry, and I'm excited to be on it. And I love the name, Bruce, and uh, I hope I can be somewhat <laughs> as entertaining as the Tapper Brothers. <laughs> That's right. Good. You just reminded me. That's right. Uh, Bruce is supposedly the most common name in Australia. And what is it? Bruce's and Sheila's, right, down there? That's Bruce's what they talk and Sheila's. About. You've got it right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Well, uh, I, I mentioned to you that I was just in Australia in uh, uh, August with my son uh, diving in the Great Barrier Reef. So maybe I'm almost a citizen at this point. We'll see. Anyway, uh, well, Jeff brings us 25 years of experience leading change management for some of the world's best-known companies. He's also a frequent presenter at conferences on topics such as operational performance and customer experience. In fact, uh, Jeff and I first met at a conference earlier this year uh, in which he gave an excellent uh, presentation. And uh, Jeff's work supporting strategy implementation has been referenced in a Harvard Business School case study. And before founding his company, Adidale, Jeff spent almost 20 years serving global clients of Charter Consulting and Gemini Consulting and in operations at Sun Alliance Life Assurance. An Australian national, as we all know, uh, Jeff earned an MBA with high honors from the University of Notre Dame here in the United States and his bachelor's degree in economics from the University of Western Australia. He lives in, uh, in Chicago with his wife and four daughters. God bless you, Jeff. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> okay. And as I said in the setup for the show, you know, there is a lot of buzz around big data. Uh, so why don't we start our interview with a little more background and uh, define the concept? Yeah, I think that's a fantastic place to start. And um, really, we need to go back about 20-odd years to when the, the phrase was first coined by NASA, um, probably appropriately so. Um, and back then, they were focusing more on the kind of big component of it, uh, the fact that it was um, data sets that were too big to be handled or processed on the typical memory and disk drives and computer systems of the day. And I think if we kind of fast forward 20 years, that definition has expanded, and uh, we now consider kind of volume, velocity, and variety kind of three key uh, components. Obviously, volume is size. Velocity is data that changes frequently. Um, It's not static uh, or stable data. And variety, that we're bringing in kind of disparate data sources. Um, Another key point about big data, I think, is the concept of structured data 
and unstructured data. Um, historically, we've tended to focus on data that's inside uh, structured databases, well-organized, um, maybe not as clean as we would always like, but on the most part, well-organized data. What we're now doing is introducing this concept of unstructured data and data from disparate systems. And I think that's where the real working definition becomes important. And uh, at a, as a company, we've actually developed what we think is a nice definition, which I'll just read to you here. Big data is combining structured and unstructured data from disparate sources to enable improved strategic insight and operational decision making. And I think that last component is very important because why else are we pursuing big data but to help us make better business decisions? Um, and I think that's uh, a point that we can never kind of lose sight of. Um, and, and Bruce, uh, you talked about big data, big buzz. You know, right now, um, the latest kind of Fortune 1000 survey suggests that a minimum 70% of the Fortune 1000 are undergoing um, big data initiatives currently, um, and I think that number is probably higher. Yeah, well, you know, it, it is interesting. It, it all, as you said, came from the technical side to begin with. I can remember probably a couple decades ago talking to somebody at Hydro Quebec in, in Quebec, and they were using sort of uh, big, big data techniques in order to be able to better respond to uh, crises in their electrical transmission systems. Uh, because, you know, when you have all those wires coming in from, uh, you know, Hudson Bay way up north down to uh, Montreal or Quebec City, wherever it is, there's tons of uh, data points, all of them computerized. Any one of them can go wrong. And if they do, how do you react? And humans actually couldn't react fast enough or understand quickly enough. Uh, to be able to react appropriately. The same sorts of things that NASA really came up against. So pulling in the data from the disparate areas, the structured and unstructured, and then making sense of it in a way that it can present it to uh, humans to then make proper decisions is, uh, is really the key thing here. So if we bring that down to our business, under bringing in the information from metrics in the uh, call center area, uh, the information that may come in from uh, customer surveys, the information that comes in from agent surveys, all of those uh, disparate sources and pulling them together, uh, as you say, Jeff, is, is really key. And really the fun part of it, okay, the creative part of it, is what you were talking about on the strategy side because that you know, requires us to think about what it is we're trying to do ultimately with the data so we can make decisions and become more competitive and therefore do better as, as our, our enterprises. So very exciting stuff. Um, could you discuss a little bit about how big this market is, uh, Jeff? Yeah, absolutely. I think the examples that you just provided were, were right on point, Bruce. Um, this, we most recently met up at an insurance conference, so I've got a few of uh, kind of insurance industry statistics in my mind, but um, this year alone, the global IT industry is going to spend something around 175 billion. Sorry, the global insurance industry about 175 billion on IT. The US alone about 80 billion, um, and a, uh, more and more of that is being shifted into the concept of analytics um, and big data type projects. As I made reference earlier, um, between 2013 and 2014, across all industries, the Fortune 1000. Um, the number of, pro of companies focusing on big data projects doubled from one-third to two-thirds, and I bet you it's close to 100% right now. Um, so uh, from a uh, kind of market breadth, I think we're seeing it is becoming part of um, you know, all industries, you know, all companies uh, at, at different sizes as well. From a technology perspective, we're so fortunate is that the concept of big data, the tools that are available to us can sit on a desktop computer these days, you know, computing capacity that was unheard of even, even a few years ago. Um, so it's at, within the reach of almost any size organization. Um, and from a data perspective, <clears throat> there are estimates around 90% of all data that is uh, available to us is now unstructured. And unstructured data could be images, it could be uh, social media, Twitter, Facebook type feeds of information. It could include um, the text notes that we capture off, you know, during and after our customer interactions in, in a contact center. Uh, that is data that is less structured than we are used to but contains valuable insight that can now be mined and incorporated into this decision-making. Um, so 
uh, it, it's very it's pervasive. However, what we're also finding is it's still relatively new, and the uh, the returns on investment are somewhat questionable. Um, again, focusing on some market research, uh, only about 18% of companies, about 20%, um, roughly a fifth, are saying that their big data initiatives are meeting their ROI objectives, their return on investment objectives or the goals of the project. Um, 20% are saying they, they can't actually... Um, uh, they're not sure whether they're meeting or not meeting their goals, and 60% suggest it's still too early. Uh, so that gives you a little bit of insight as to we're kind of racing into the big data, but maybe we have to pause for a minute and think a bit about how we're approaching the topic. Which isn't unusual. I mean, when we think about it, most of the things that have transformed the world uh, don't just come out and transform the world. It takes a while for people to understand their transformative uh, qualities and to actually be able to leverage them properly. And I think one of the things you said is really key here. It's really the bring together of data. So even those listeners who are in organizations that are not huge, that may not be getting you know billions of terabytes of data, <laughs> on a regular basis, uh, can utilize the techniques of big data, right, and utilize the uh, the ways of pulling those disparate data chunks together and then utilizing them, uh, even if they aren't really, really big. And so uh, that's something I, I hope our listeners will, will take to heart, even those who are in uh, somewhat smaller organizations. Uh, but the other thing that you were saying, which is really interesting, is the fact that uh, you know you may want to be careful about going into it at this point. You may want to be in sort of a learning mode for for a while, uh, unless you're ready to to jump in, because you want to be sure that you're part of the 20% and not part of the 80%, the old 80/20 rule, right? Because you don't want uh, your big data project to be a big bust for your company and your career, right? That's that's exactly right, um, and just to that point, that twenty percent number, or you know, the eighteen percent, was from two thousand and twelve. And as mm. we were doing a little bit of research, we thought, okay, that's going to get better. Two thousand and fifteen, some pretty current uh, market data suggests that um, of companies who are actively pursuing um, big data initiatives, and this is across industries, um, it's now almost doubled. They're, Estimating about 38%, say say roughly two fifths, are unsure if their big data projects ROI will be positive or negative. Um, so that tells you we're dealing with you know Fortune 1000 type organizations. Um, so it's not a initiative to be taken without good planning and um, a well thought through approach, which is Bruce the point you just made. Right, and and which is part of good management in, in any event. Uh, you know, we really you need to sort of study this stuff, understand it, talk with experts, uh, talk with peers, uh, read up on it, and then uh, come up with a plan that's got a projected ROI. Uh, carry it out, and then um, you know do the ROI, and and hopefully you you've got a positive one that uh, you can report to management and to uh, people like us who survey you, right? <laughs> From time yeah, to time. exactly. <laughs> But, uh, okay, so, uh, you know, how about impact? Let's talk about impact. Uh, a lot of companies are investing in big data. Uh, what uh, should our listeners know about what the impact could be? Yeah, no, I, I think that's a great question. And like with any initiative that we want to undertake, we want to clearly try and define what the end goal is. Why are we doing this? And the approach that we typically take is we will uh, focus on what we call the voices um, and not the uh, the Simon Cow type voices, Cow. but uh, <laughs> voice of the customer. <laughs> you don't want to hear. You, you don't want to. You don't want to sing for us, Jeff. You don't want to sing. <laughs> no, I will spare the listeners. No, but we want to focus on the voice of the customer, the voice of the business, and the voice of the employee, and we want to start to ask ourselves. What type of information and what type of data would be helpful for me to better understand and better serve and to provide more value across the customer, the business, and the employee? Um, so how can I better understand my customer from their, their needs, their wants, from a product design, from a, how we want to integrate and interface with them, uh, how do we want to touch the customers? 
that's the kind of information that uh, we can glean from you know better understanding of the data, the big data component from the business. Obviously, it's how to improve our competitiveness, our market positioning. How can we understand from a brand equity, as an example, brand reputation, what the, the social media buzz might be saying about our business so we can get in front of issues or we can capitalize on any positive trends. And we also want to focus on better understanding how can we efficiently and effectively continue to serve uh, our customers. If we wear a contact center customer service perspective, it's how do I build this increased knowledge into the uh, operations, the process and the operations and my system design and my, my touch point and, and the kind of customer journey so that I'm better serving my customer, uh, which is better for my business. And then finally, as an employee, there's tremendous uh, uh, insight that can come out of this. Um, we can shift uh, our workers into more value-added activities because we're able to uh, maybe use big data to eliminate some of the more administrative or mundane tasks. We can maybe automate more routinized um, uh, activities and processes. There's new career paths being created. Just think about it. The whole concept of big data is providing uh, capabilities and skills and jobs that didn't exist three or five years ago. That creates you know more career tracks and career paths for staff that maybe didn't exist that are more attractive. So there are a lot of really good business benefits. We just have to spend a bit of time defining them across kind of the key maybe pillars of our company. And each company will have a different structure, but a great starting point is to say how can this improve what kind of our strategic focus is as a business. You know, th this is an area too that's fascinating to me as as I work with clients and, and uh, talk to people around the industry, the voice of the customer, of the business, and of the employee. Because um, what uh, is, is so important, uh, as you know, Jeff, is to hear what the customer is saying and try to hear it from what they're saying and also through the big data because you can imply an awful lot uh, from the data that you collect on what people are doing, whether they're going to certain places on your website, uh, whether they're using certain keywords if you have uh, anal voice analytics on your, your, your among your systems. Uh, various things like that. Is So there's the hearing part, then there's the understanding part, and then there's the very human part. This uh, All this big data comes into a, okay, how do, you, how do you figure out what the customer is feeling about things and also what your employees are feeling about things? Uh, because if you can figure that out, then you'll get to the emotional side of things as well, and you'll end up being learning or figuring out how to partner with them and ultimately how to anticipate uh, things from them. So that requires that your big data initiatives both pull together all of this disparate uh, data and uh, make better sense of it all, but also never um, prevent you from drilling down to look at things like, for instance, uh, the open-ended survey question that uh, customers may give you, or uh, pulling out those keywords from the voice analytics, or uh, the same sort of survey question that a uh, an agent might uh, give you, a call center agent. Um, so, again, part of the exciting thing is seeing the big data, uh, being able to come to conclusions about the things from the big data, but also able to drill down, never losing that capacity in terms of the way you implement big data so that you can, uh, in fact, you know, see what, 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 what people are, are saying and feeling. Um, anyway, any thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I, I think you've hit on a couple of great points there, um, and uh, specifically that, that kind of human part, the, the emotion and the feeling, because um, as we know, when we're, even if we answer, uh, sorry, even if we ask open-ended questions or we try to, to probe uh, more unstructured questions to solicit genuine feedback, uh, we're always at the mercy that the customer or the, the person on the other end of the survey um, does not truly communicate how they're feeling or their true emotion. Now, sometimes they do, and, and as, as contact center people, unfortunately, we get it, uh, too many of those. But at the same time, <laughs> how do we constructively, how do we constructively analyze, you know, hundreds or hundreds of thousands of these feedback points? Um, again, the voice analytics is a great way to generate data sets that can be analyzed, the surveys, etc. And I think that is where you start to really get insight that previously has been very difficult to get in a meaningful way. 
And then that can get, again, translated back into how we um, design our flows and operations and maybe even how we design, um, you know, the, the workflows inside a, a contact center, et cetera. And, and I think that that opens up um, a real or improves at least our understanding of the customer in a way that is difficult to get at using the more traditional, uh, you know, data capture techniques that we've relied on in the past. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and well, Bruce, I think the company that can do that well is a company that can be a step ahead of you know the com- the competitors in the competitive marketplace. Right, right. The, the ability to take the the data to use it, then to figure out what people are actually feeling, anticipate what they want, act on all of those things, uh, and therefore really build up your brand equity because your brand equity really speaks to the relationship that you have. Uh, with your customers, uh, you, you probably heard the phrase that uh, you know brand is a promise made. A great brand is a promise kept, time after time. And uh, if you're able to take that even a step further and say it's a um, a promise, a future promise, right, <laughs> of something that uh, the customer needs or wants or would be attracted by, uh, it gets even better. And, and big data is a way of actually getting there because you can right. see trends. You can see trends through big data that you may not see otherwise, and therefore those trend lines can be brought to conclusions and stimulate thought patterns that can uh, give you competitive advantage. So can you give us some tangible examples of applications of big data? Yeah, absolutely I can. Um, There's a few that that come into um, uh, into play here. But before I dive into some specific examples, just a quick comment is – for all those of us who work inside uh, customer contact centers or call centers, uh, we often uh, the source of this incredibly valuable insight and the source of the, the big data that goes into this analysis that is then used even outside of the core contact center operations. And I'll give you some examples. Um, as we think about marketing, messaging, product design uh, as an example, Often the input into that is input that's captured through formal processes, you know, uh, focus groups, market research and the like, but also through this wealth of data that is collected through our real live customer interactions and customer contacts. So as we think about big data wearing a contact center hat, we have to think that not only can it improve our operations, but it can also be an incredible uh, source of input elsewhere within the company. So the, app, the direct applications are much broader than just um, the contact center. Uh, but inside the contact center, you know, another great example could be a little bit of predictive analytics where how can we, by, using, by um, having a good insight into call patterns and customer profiles, that we can get in front of the reason why the customer might be calling our call center and try and serve up proactively the information they are looking for without them having to ask or without them having to actually get into um, uh, and talk live with an agent. Uh, So what we can do is we can start to um, automate certain tasks, we can eliminate some of the more routine calls, and that what that does is that frees up our agents to do more value-added customer interactions, uh, to legitimate problem solving. And big data can help us build those uh, predictive analytics and serve up that kind of um, you know, predictive uh, channeling and routing. Uh, it's a great example. Um, outside of the call center or the contact center, we can think about um, some examples I mentioned earlier is product design. And we can talk about how we may want to uh, change certain process flows based upon the data that we're learning. Uh, it could be messaging, media type of strategies out in the communications externally uh, into the marketplace. There's a lot of opportunities, and I encourage our listeners to think bigger than just their day-to-day operations. How else can this information set really drive decision-making uh, within my organization, not just within yeah. my particular function. Well, a, a very important point, and uh, by doing that, you end up building a radial, what I like to call radial organization for your um, contact center, and you actually form better relationships with the other parts of your organization, including marketing, 
uh, we're always the bane of contact center people, uh, you know, with the product development people, with the technical writing people, all of those people can really uh, uh, benefit from the, the big data initiatives, and they should be part of it, and therefore they can pay for part of it too. I mean, you can get the funding more easily for these initiatives if uh, you get some involvement from those folks. But do you have, without mentioning any names, do you have any uh, examples of a uh, big data initiative that's gone well that uh, you know people you can tell people about? And we'll do that yeah. before we head toward questions because I know we've got a couple of questions that Brian has. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'll, I'll give you one uh, quick case case study here um, where uh, it, it was a uh, customer contact center and they were handling all, you know, I forget how many unique calls, you know, in the millions uh, over the course of uh, each year. And they were ca very good at capturing copious notes and voice recordings and things along these lines. And what they actually were able to do, and it took them quite a while, but, uh, but what they were able to do is, again, focusing on the unstructured data, they were able to get a, a second layer of insight into customers that called but ended up not purchasing, you know, versus, and this is more of an um, uh, inbound sales center, uh, and versus customers that called and ended up purchasing. And they were actually able to uh, refine their scripts somewhat based upon some customer profiles that were developed. And as the agent was leading through their conversation, they were able to kind of uh, check some milestones which would help direct the script and tailor the message somewhat to the expected profile of the caller at the end uh, of, the, of the other end of the telephone. Uh, and they actually did see measurable, they had baseline performance and they measured it you know, um, post-implementation and they were able to see some uh, measurable performance in conversion rates. So that was a very clear success. Um, I'll be honest with you, Bruce, um, it was once or the one or two tries before they got it right, uh, and they had to iterate a little bit, but nevertheless, a great example of where access to that big data, which was not available previously, helped them get a better understanding of the, the customer profile and how to interact with the, the different customers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a great, great, uh, great example there. Um, good. Well, we've. Uh, we're, we're, I think we're going to go a few minutes over on this because this is just too interesting to, to shut off. So, are there any uh, sort of key takeaways uh, before we go to questions that you'd like to mention to us, Jeff? You know, I, I think just a, a, a very high-level summary. Um, uh, just a couple of myths here. Um, big data has to be big. It doesn't. And we touched on that a bit earlier, that this type of analytics is available to organizations and, and functions of all sizes. Um, however, it's not plug and play. You don't just buy a piece of software and voila, you have big data. Uh, it has to be planned, managed. You want a baseline. You have to set goals. Um, a broad team involvement is, is beneficial. Really manage the process to try and get the results. Um, and the big data piece is very interesting, which we haven't touched on yet, is the collection of the data, the information, is step one, and that's potentially a complicated step. The analysis and insight is a second component that is where the value comes from, how we improve decision making. Um, let's not forget that, that we have to actually analyze the data, not just collect it. And, and that's a point that's, it sounds so simple, but it's sometimes uh, overlooked a little bit, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. So I think if we can keep some of these uh, things in mind as we embark on, on big data projects or as we maybe revisit existing big data projects uh, within our companies, um, that may help keep us in the, the you know twenty percent and not the eighty percent. Right, which is where we want to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I, I think we've got time for one or two questions. We may go a little bit over, Brian, and uh, I think that's okay. Uh, Brian, do you have okay. a question for uh, Jeff? Yeah, I do. And and before we jump into some of the listener questions, I wanted to ask a question that I think um, probably all the listeners are thinking is, um, Jeff, are you uh, a fan of Star Trek? I am, yes. Okay, and are you familiar with the uh, the next generation with uh, Captain Jean Luc Picard? Yes, I am. <laughs> and like William Riker, Worf, and Jardy, and Deanna. Uh, and so, what is the name of his lieutenant commander? <laughs> the android. <laughs> oh, the android Data. Oh, I just wanted to hear you say, is it Big Data you or Big Data? 
<laughs> you never hear Lieutenant I, Commander Dada. No, yeah, that's a very good point. You got me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. All right, uh, on a more serious note, um, from Michael. All right, Michael says, how long does it take to implement big data, and how much does it cost? <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's a it's a wonderful question, um, but very difficult to answer, um, as you can imagine. Uh, it's going to depend a lot on kind of scope, maturity of the uh, analytical. Uh, uh, processes are in existence within a, a particular company, um, the goals, etc. Um, you know, my my coaching to anyone that's uh, kind of maybe starting off right from scratch here is um, scope it modestly. Um, don't focus on the technology. Focus more on the uh, insight and analytics or the business problem we're trying to solve, and put realistic boundaries around what we want to get done in our phase one or our phase zero, if you like, and focus on um, you know, using Access and Excel and use tools that are already available to you, if, if possible, to kind of pilot the concepts and scale it from there. You know? And that's a way you can help manage the costs. You can gain valuable experience. You can put wins on the board more quickly the last thing you want to do is undergo a multi-million dollar, multi-year project and really not show much until the end. Unfortunately, you'll probably fall in the 80%. Um, so you know, it, I would suggest to help manage costs, help manage time, is you want to box it into discrete periods and put wins on the board, regularly deliver, lessons learned, you will make mistakes, things won't always work. Acknowledge those, embrace them, build them into the learning curve, and then keep moving forward to keep iterating. Just like the client example I gave you, they iterated. They didn't get it right the first time. They iterated, they iterated. They're still iterating, but they're getting wins on the board as they go, and that's really exciting to see. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that uh, idea of what iteration is something that uh, call center managers, uh, particularly ones who are very involved with workforce management, understand that, you know, you can sort of get better with it over time and it's a refinable, uh, you know, skill and technique. And uh, we've done some uh, uh, experimenting, too, with the inbound sales side, the sorts of things you were talking about, Jeff. And it's very exciting as you make the changes and uh, keep track of the, the statistics and the benchmarking of those, you really uh, can find a lot of interesting uh, changes to make, tweaks here and there. Uh, you can do use techniques such as using the technique for part of your organization but not for all of your organization. You do pilot and so the, the the script change, whatever it happens to be, um, you know, is ch used on part of the organization. That way, you can compare it with the other part of the organization, which is the control group, if you will. And uh, that's part of the fun of managing. I mean, that's part of what we can do as call center managers to get better and uh, better results. And the fact that this new tool uh, is available to us, if we use it properly, uh, big data can be, you know, a real help to us. So. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. So how about one more question? We're going to go a little bit over here, yep. but I think this is uh, too exciting to stop. So let's keep going. <laughs> yeah, and I, I might kind of blend these two questions. Uh, this one comes from Worf and Deanna Troy. Um, no, I'm just kidding. From <laughs> <laughs> Sandy and from Kellyanne. Um, what are some specific big data initiatives, and then what are the critical success factors for projects such as big data? Right. So um, let me focus on the critical success factors maybe first here because I think this is an important message to get across. Um, well, as we started to allude to, the big data can become big projects. And um, if big projects aren't managed well from the very beginning, uh, they, they tend to take a life of their own and potentially kind of miss targets, miss milestones, etc. cetera. Um, I think that it's very important upfront to establish a very clear objective of what we are trying to solve for, a business objective. Scope it and define deliverables. There is a little bit of debate in the big data world where because we have access to all of this information, we should start to just mine the data and see what it tells us. Uh, in the old phraseology, it was kind of boil the ocean. And I personally think that while that has some benefit, maybe you want to be a bit more sophisticated before you take that approach. I would rather be hypothesis driven. There's a particular business issue we're trying to solve for or we have a particular hypothesis we're testing for 
and use data to try and test that because that way we're going to be able to manage to objectives. I think we need to have a cross-functional team. Don't do this alone. This should not just be an IT project. This should not just be a contact center project. We want to say who are the stakeholders that could benefit from this, both providing value and capabilities, but also um, users of the output. And let's try to have a bit more of a collaborative cross-functional approach so that um, it enhances uh, the partners we need and, and the chances of success. Um, I think baselining is very important, the before and after. It's difficult to say whether we met our goals if we don't know what our performance was prior to starting. So I think it's critical to have benchmarks and baselines, the current state, and then have goals for what we think the future state should be. And let's test along the way. Let's measure and, and, and quantify uh, what we are learning and, and the benefits we're getting from the big data initiatives. And then always try and link it back to a business objective, I mean, one of the, maybe it's your departmental goals, maybe it's all the way up to a corporate goal. But let's say, if I can do this right, if I can solve this problem, here's how it flows all the way up to meeting you know, the, the, the goals of the business. Because if we can do that, again, it's really hard for the company to say, well, that's not a good investment of you know, resources, time and financial resources. Um, so I think that they're some of the key critical success factors um, in, in kind of launching or managing uh, in any project, but in particular a big data project where um, it's a little bit new. I mean, you know, it's a newer initiative to many companies. Mm-hmm. So, great so great points there. there. Yeah. yeah, no, I did. Fabulous points, uh, really good. And uh, one thing that I would say to our listeners is, uh, as I oftentimes do, is demand your place at the table because you deserve it, right? Uh, if there's big data initiatives going on inside your company, uh, you belong there. And so there's a lot that will end up on your plate because you're the uh, interface between <laughs> the company and the uh, the customer. And on the other hand, if you're put in charge of the table, be sure and invite others. Build that radial organization. So. Uh, Jeff, really, I, I'd like to uh, thank you very much for coming on. Uh, excellent insights, uh, very, very stimulating conversation, and um, uh, thank you very much for, for coming on the show, Jeff. Uh, my pleasure, Brian, and again, thanks for hosting this uh, fantastic forum. Okay, very good. Well, I'll, I'll turn things over to Brian at this point to wrap things up. We've gone a little bit over, but I'm glad we did, and uh, great show. Yeah, thanks, you guys, and uh, thanks, Jeff. I appreciate and, uh, you know, your uh, time here as well as being good sport with my humor there. But uh, whether you say big data, big data, it doesn't matter. It's an important topic, and it's definitely not going away. So uh, definitely consider that and uh, work it into your management of your contact center or business. Uh, also, be sure to join us next month for another great show, and uh, make sure to look at our huge selection of archive shows and topics at BenchmarkPortal.com. Find our Call Talk section where you'll find over five seasons of this great show. So from all of us here at Benchmark Portal, keep those headsets steady and your fingers ready. This is Lieutenant Commander Dada. Oh, sliding out. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> Engage.